Hello, crew. It's your friend and host, Arturo Sprecaso. Today, we're going to be taking your skills a little bit further, and we're going to incorporate everything that we've learned so far, as much as blending and highlighting, and we're going to create this amazing painting called Rosie the Owl. So if you guys are ready, grab your spray paints. Let's get ready to rattle. For today's painting, we're going to be using the Spray Castle brand of spray paints. We're going to start, as always, with our background layer. In this case, it's going to be light green. Then I'm going to go over it with a little bit of orange. I don't want that green to be too overpowering, so I'm just kind of blending some orange into it, giving us a little bit of a transitional phase between the two colors. Now, this is something a little bit unique that we haven't done before. I'm using a soft tip tool to draw the outline of the owl that I'm going to draw. Now, I've always said you guys don't need to have an artistic hand to be able to spray paint, and I still stand behind that 100%. However, if you can draw, or if you want to use a little bit of a tracing stencil, you can most definitely use this in spray painting. Here, I went ahead and I just did drew the outline of an owl, and I want this owl not to look very realistic. I want it to have a cartoon feel to it. Uh, maybe perhaps this is what I was thinking I was going for a fairy tale something that you would find in a, in a kid's book so it's gonna be a little bit cute it's gonna be cartoonish in a sense and what I'm doing here is I tapped into some yellow and I'm smearing the yellow into the colors that we have below so we have some light green a little bit of orange and now we're putting our, our orange on top of that and blending those together with a little bit of black, I'm outing the outline of the eye. I'm just going to kind of smear that together. Now, the soft tip tools are really good for creating this effect as you start to blend the paints together. Now, this may not be something that you're able to do with a whole lot of paints out there. Uh, I am using the Spray Castle brand spray paints to do this. And as you can see, they blend really well together, giving you an almost oil-like effect if you decide to go this route. Here I'm just going to add a little bit of white, just so that we can add a little bit of highlight to the owl. A little bit of white here on the eyes, right about here. And this will make your eyes look reflective, like they're, uh, you know they're white, you know they have a little bit of light reflecting onto this. And then I'm just going to blend some white onto the top part of the owl's eyes. Right, now we went ahead and we did that to the other eye. Now, mixing red and black, that's going to give us a dark red. I'm just going to start creating the outline of the owl. This is going to be the feathers underneath. I'm just going to add some shadows. We're just going to go throughout here. You can use the broad and soft tip spray castle tool. Uh, guys, for more questions or comments on the tools, you can definitely go to my website, www.spraycastle.com and you can find out more information on these tools there. Basically what I'm doing is following the outline of the owl that I drew. I'm just smearing some colors together. In this case, we have some red and a little bit of black. We're just going to create some of the feathers that are down here hanging. Now I know I want to create a tree. This owl is going to be standing on a tree branch. Right? So I just have kind of the feathers hanging down here on the bottom using a little bit of red and I'm just touching into a little bit of black, not a whole lot. I went ahead and I added a little bit of orange too. I'm just going to start working on some of these bright colors. I want this out to be very colorful, so I'm adding a lot of fall colors. I'm adding some oranges, some reds, a uh, little bit of black. And when you combine orange with black, it'll give you a brown tone. So I'm actually counting on that very much. I'm just going to go around here, creating the feathers adding a little bit of darker areas right around here now you can create a more realistic owl but I thought we'd do something a little bit funner something that perhaps you can spray paint with your kids uh, guys before you spray paint make sure that you're always wearing your mask it's very important you your kids everybody and make sure that you guys do it in a well ventilated area spray paint can be a lot of fun but Let's be careful, all right? I'm just going to add a little bit of white here in the edges. I just noticed that the owls have these nice little bright spots. And thus, you know, you have some, some spotted owls. So I'm just going to add a little bit of white throughout our owl. Have some fun. 
Now here is where I create the branch. This is going to be the tree branch for the owl standing. And we're using the spray castle funnel. Again, if you guys want to learn more information on how to create the spray castle funnel, uh, visit my website and you'll be able to find plenty of information and videos showing you how to create the funnel and other tools. So here I'm just going to create the outline. Now see, this is the part where I want my owl to be sitting on. And I still don't really know how thick I want to make this branch. Well, thick enough to cover some of this negative space underneath the owl. Now, you don't necessarily have to just do this in one try. It may take a couple of times of you going back and forth to thicken out the branch. See here, I just created the outline and then now I'm filling it in. So, like I said, guys, it may take a few times, a few little tries. It's okay. It's going to be a little time consuming, but take your time. I find this time to be quite relaxing. It's the time where I start filling in. And you know what? At the same time, I take this time to visualize how else I want this branch to look, how thick I want it to be here on the bottom, what kind of little branches do I want sticking out. So here I'm just going to thicken it out. This is another thing why I love these paints so much. They blend so well. I'm just going to add a little more black. We're going to create some, some of the tree leaves. This is a sea sponge. This is the same kind of sea sponge that you can find in arts and crafts stores. Uh, regular stores have them and these are my favorite because they create the more realistic type of tree leaves very random uh, whenever I use synthetic brushes they have a pre-designed pattern and you can see that throughout your painting uh, besides in my opinion paint just seems to work a little bit better with this kind of sea sponge uh, when you use synthetic sponge, it absorbs it a little bit more and it just gets soggy really fast. I know I understand it's a little more expensive, but I highly recommend it, guys. Now, using the Spray Castle Funnel, I just added some black. I'm just going to add a couple more branches here on the top. And I'm overlapping the tree leaves that I did below. Just like that. I'm just going to make this branch a little bit thicker. There we go. I want to give the illusion that the tree is going out of the frame and then coming back into the frame. Here I'm just going to add some minor branches. Up and down. Just going to thicken this up a little bit more. Great. Now, for the next step, I think we've got to work on our highlights of the tree. So I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow, and this is going to be more of a mid-tone. I don't want it to be too bright so that it stands out. I want it to blend in. So while the tree is still very wet, I'm just going to add a little bit of this yellow. I'm just going to add a little bit here on the edges where I want the sunlight to be coming and hitting the branches. So I'm going to do this here to the left, right here, and I'm going to do the same to the tree branch up above as well as this area right here. Now you can't really see because the camera is kind of far away from the painting but you can see the mid-tone when you get up close to it. And I'll show you that here in a little bit. I'm just gonna add a little bit here on the sides. Now I'm making sure that I cover some of the spots that I've missed especially on the edges because you don't want the tree to be black and then have a little bit of a gap and then you see your mid-tone so you want to make sure you get the edges pretty well well at least the edges where the sun is hitting it just tapping into some black using a little bit of our sea sponge and we're just going to create some more tree leaves these are going to be closer to us quick sprays, tap, 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 as you can tell it doesn't take a whole lot, that's the beauty about the sea sponge, it absorbs a lot and you're able to, to continue painting for a lot longer than just synthetic sponges. We're going to do the same thing here, I'm just using the spray castle funnel, I'm going to create some branches, I'm trying to give it a very random effect, everything in nature is very random, I'm just going to create a quick branch here. Maybe one more right about here. 
going right there to our left. Good, I like this. Now, you know what we're missing is our light source. So we've been preparing for our light source and I think it's time that we put it on there. So I'm gonna use some white. Now guys, this is a little tricky, so I'm just gonna get really close to our painting. I'm just gonna do a quick burst and I'm gonna start backing away while bursting. This will give us an effect of how bright the sun is. So you see it starts off as a perfectly round circle and then it starts to have that radiance from it. Good. All right, now here I'm using a little bit of red. Like I said, I wanted to create this painting with a lot of fall colors, reds, browns, uh, you know, dark browns, blacks. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of red into these leaves, right about here. And what you do to one side, you gotta do to the other side, guys. You gotta keep the balance on the painting. So I'm just gonna tap into a little more red. And this, this perhaps can be part of the tree leaves. Perhaps it's a little bit of the highlights from the sun hitting it. I'm just gonna make it nice and colorful. Look at that. You see those, those leaves really standing out. And they balance out the owl as well because the owl has a lot of red, a lot of orange, a lot of brown. And this gives your eyes a little bit more to observe throughout the painting. It doesn't just focus on the owl completely. Right. I'm just going to add a little orange. And I'm going to add this throughout our tree leaves as well. Now notice how I'm keeping it mostly on the edges. I mean, that's mostly where the colors is located at. Just right about here. Okay, and right here, right where our light source is. I like this, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys like it? All right, now let's work on the branch, the tree branch. I'm just gonna come in here, using a little bit of orange. I'm gonna start working on those brighter highlights. So notice earlier we used a little bit of yellow and we created the effect of mid-tones. So now we're going to go through here and using the soft tip tool we're going to go up and down a couple of times blending the colors that we added below. By going up and down a couple of times you'll see that you'll get a marble effect and that's what we're going for. I don't want to completely turn it into a mush of brown. I want some of that marble look to look throughout our tree and this will give it a more realistic bark effect. All right, well, I think this completes today's tutorial. This is the painting that we've created. It was definitely a lot of fun making it and I think we've learned a couple of new techniques to add to your arsenal. All right, crew, well, until next time, keep those cans shaking. See you soon.